which is a fail. A short future education, a short future economic situation. And um, I know you have seen some of their faces around the world that they are just representative from the NGO. So um, that being said, what I just want to talk about basically is on one of the tests that we did today. Apart from the vital standard of checks, that's the blood pressure and all that, we did a test for the blood sugar, which is one of the tests that we do to diagnose for people that have diabetes. Now, some of these common um, sicknesses and diseases, they are very common, and by the time we get into the body, it causes some complications. Now, it is those complications that is usually the problem at the end of the day that makes it lose terminal or incurable. But the ability to move it's usually very, very curious, and even preventable. And that is why it's very important for people, for us, or not just people that are sick, but for everybody to have a regular medical treatment. That is the reason why we are introducing this. So that regularly, as staff, you see, as teachers, it's not easy. The stress, everybody has his own family, his own family, and you get back to your place of work when you are dealing with children. It's stress for yourself. So as you see some people that are doing either engineering work and other, as a teacher, we realize and we know that your work too is very stressful. And that's why it's important that no recovery I'm actually medical treatment. And that is why a lot of people are there. Regular doing this. Regularly we're doing this. And we'll be coming around and we'll be doing as much tests. We've just been able to do about four tests for us. With time. We extend it to as many tests as possible. We plan doing an HIV screening, but what are some people here where some people are like you all uh, HIV test, you know? But as scary as all these tests may sound, it is very important that we it is better to know what is wrong with you than you just walking around and carrying the disease for the sick. A very good example. Another name they call it is silent killer. You see, so many people walk around with high blood pressure. Of course, it doesn't manifest with any signs or symptoms. If somebody has malaria, you see that the person has fever, the person is vomiting, the person is complaining of body pains, the person is complaining of just general tiredness, you know, just weak. He said that the person is complaining of all these things. You will know that when that Japan is malaria or something like that. He said, when have diarrhea now, what's the next thing? He starts to rain. So you know this person has some. But the problem with our attention is you just keep walking around. Right? It's like a time bomb. Before the person knows what's wrong, he said that stroke. Or he said that the has gotten so bad that it has affected the kidney or the liver or the heart itself finally shuts down. So that is why it is better when you do tests like this. You find out that your blood pressure is high, then the next thing is that what do I do? We advise you what to do. It's not immediately in most times that it is um, medication. At least you notice some blood pressure to that right now. And because it's not really that up there, we advise some of them with their dietary changes. We advise some with lifestyle changes. Once you do a few patients here and there on those things, you find out that they are okay. You find out that blood pressure comes down. But what I really, really want to talk about today is not even the hypertension. It's what you call hepatitis. Uh, I actually have a slide. I plan to get to go. Uh, since we are all in um, short of time now. Let me just um, read it out. But if anybody cares to have a sample of the presentation, I can always transfer it to you for your own, uh, for your own uh, education. Uh, so now what we talk about is hepatitis. And in specific, I want to talk about hepatitis B. 
as, as I said about uh, hypertension, there is an unknown killer, there is a silent killer. I want to talk about hepatitis also as an untold silent killer. If I ask everybody here today, we all know about hypertension. One person or the other can tell you something about hypertension. But hepatitis, there are few information about it. And it's as deadly and as some who regard it also, it's even deadlier than HIV. Everything you know about HIV, the form of transmission, is almost the same as hepatitis. But the only problem there is that hepatitis is, can be infected by body fluid and not just blood flow, sweat. Saliva, every body fluid that comes out from you can infect another person with hepatitis. Now, this hepatitis, it's briefly, uh, the, the very common way for me to describe it, is a disease that affects the liver. It's a virus, just like HIV. It's a virus. You can't see it. But when it gets into the body, it will go quietly into the liver. And when you bang out when I saw it. So it goes into the liver and hibernates. So there are a lot of people that are walking around with hepatitis. So they are careers. So they are going around with it. They keep infecting other people. Because it goes into the liver and keeps multiplying. It keeps multiplying. And it starts sending those as children to your sweat, to your blood, to your tears, saliva, even a man, the semen. It goes like that and starts secreting all those the viruses, you know, multiply and it's all there. So as people are coming to sweat, you come in contact with sweat, you come in contact with blood, you come in contact with all these body fluid, you can get infected. And it gets to the body like this. It goes into the liver and it starts destroying that one. So that's why they call it hepatitis. The word hepatitis itself is a Latin word, it means liver. So it's the protection of the liver. You need to see here, but after that, have a picture of the changes that occur in the liver. How you will see the normal liver, how it looks. But by the time this virus gets there, the way it destroys it and what it's going to do. Now it is said that one, one in four adults, that is if you put four people down like this, that have hepatitis B, you put four, four of them down, one of the four people will die of this. It is that dangerous. So me saying all these things about hepatitis B and all this, it is very deadly because when you are infected, you won't even feel anything, you won't see anything. Like I said, don't go hide in the liver. And you're busy doing your own thing. You're busy living your normal life. But the virus is in there. And by the time it manifests, usually, Because by the time it's destroying the liver, that destroys the structure of the liver, on the long run also, it can cause cancer of the liver. And you know, usually when things get to the cancer stage, especially because of our environment, there is late detection. People don't come to the hospital on time. Eventually when they come to the hospital, the disease will have progressed such that it is more or less too late. Therefore, that is why what we did today is very, very important. Because the easiest solution to hepatitis B is prevention number one. You prevented it. And then number two, detecting on time. There's a case of you preventing it from happening. And then there's a case that even if it has happened, 
how can you detect it on time before it leads into complications? And because it won't show, it won't manifest. So it's better you don't do a routine test like this. So that if it is there, that it's hiding, you can easily know. Now you may not. When it's not manifested, what are the things that you notice? Or what are the things that you can see? Now, because it affects the liver, the liver is very important in the body. That's how I end So everything the liver does in the body is affected. The liver is the one that helps you with digestion. Most especially the It's the liver that helps you with digestion. The liver is the one that helps in excreting what we call bilirubin. When you're taking a drug, it's the liver that helps you to break down that drug. So what the body can use. There are so many functions of the liver. Now imagine that the liver fails and the body is unable to do all these things. So that means you eat the food not digest properly. And because it helps in breaking down the body by one of the end signs you see is yellowness of the eyes or the skin. What is called jaundice. Come and check your body. You might see jaundice. You need child. It's a different thing than possible. Or in an adult, see on the jaundice the level. You know, there is another um, thing we're planning with the time on sickle cell. Somebody that is sickle cell anemic would have been showing jaundice, that yellowness, from childhood. So it's something not in the that person. But another still stock one is being fine, he has never had yellowness, and all of a sudden the eyes become yellow, the nail belt become yellow, you know, you start thinking of hepatitis. You start thinking something is wrong with the liver. Good. Another thing, another way it manifests again is by swell, abdominal swelling. There will be abdominal distension. And most especially, it's the area of the liver that gets So it keeps getting. And when such abdomen is stuck, if I don't have everything, tendons. But trust me, by the time you get into all these stages, it's almost too late. So to reinforce all that we say, that is why it is very important that we need a test like this for everybody. We've done the test for everybody. At least everybody that came around today. We need a test for sugar, we need a test for malaria, and we need a test for hepatitis. And so far, so good. I think we should thank God and pass our test for that. Every test that we've done has been negative. So it's a good thing. We are starting on a very good note. And now we can build and keep up on that. By God's will, by next year, we can do something like this. And God will be much more to figure out this. Before next year, there are plans for the students as well. Too. So by and large, also, you might be wondering why is it that I've talked about hepatitis, but you were sharing mosquito nets for some of us. The reason why we shared mosquito nets as well is that, incidentally, yesterday is the world malaria day. So, I'm one of the attributes of the world malaria day is we talk about malaria. You see, the thing about us in the tropics, you know, those of us that live in this part of the world, we take diseases like malaria, we take it for granted. Literally, we don't care. We can everybody care, but about malaria at one time or the other. And if I ask everybody, we know the treatment for malaria. We all do. In fact, so much so that you don't need us again. 
You don't need a doctor in there. You diagnose yourself, you prescribe for yourself, and you go and buy. Not just that for them. Some will diagnose themselves, would prescribe and produce their own drugs themselves. Such that when somebody presents to them, when you present to the doctor and you ask, a cast of mouth, kilo shape, no malaria. <laughs> because automatically, why I'm saying all this now, we know what malaria is. But do you know that while we are talking, 10 children have died of malaria? Why we've been talking here since 10 have died of this same malaria? At one place or the other, all the world. It is still that dangerous. Malaria is number one killer of children in developing countries. As simple as we think malaria is. So malaria is still a big problem. It's still a big problem. And one of the major problems that malaria has right now is ethnologosia right now. Reason being that we set that news, we self-prescribe. So because of that, our friend Alamapa, last. And because we don't know if what we are doing is right or wrong, because we didn't go to a professional to treat us. If I ask everybody one by one, if you have malaria, or how do you treat malaria? I won't be surprised if we all get it wrong. Just in the last one week, why on my own, in my mind, I think I was on vacation. I treated four people from malaria. Now, of the four people that I treated from malaria, one person decided to go ahead and treat herself. I went and asked her, oh, she was like, oh, yes, yes, yes. If I don't let she know. It was a totally different thing. It's not anybody's fault. But well, because we've been taking malaria for granted, like I said. So what we now find out is that the parasites, Okoton for malaria, they get resistant to the drugs. So we say, normally, because we have abused it, they now don't work anymore. What am I saying all this? I'm getting education every day, so nobody is beyond it. I just want to enlighten us that for the celebration of what malaria is, we all know what malaria is, but please, let's treat malaria the right way. When you have or when you feel those symptoms that look like malaria, see your doctor. And it's not just about seeing doctor again. Whatever drug the doctor asks you to take, take the drug and take it as prescribed. Because it's a different case to take doctor's drug. It's another case to follow instructions. The conclusion, I want to thank everybody for participating. But it's a different case to call. It's a different case for people to come. So I want to appreciate every body here that will call for your presence and you all came around to have this place done today. And from the bottom of my heart, I pray that God will the grace to do even much, much more.